Well, I thought today we'd look at this whole idea that uh, a mobile phone can be as good a camera as an actual camera and why would you buy especially a point and shoot type when you've got a phone in your pocket so we're going to look at uh, the quality of the images the ease of use the ergonomics of the thing we'll uh, test them out against each other in different scenarios see if the phone can actually be better than a dedicated camera in some situations and is it worth just using your phone as your everyday walk around camera or should you stick with something purpose-built so I've got my Fujifilm X70 which uh, is probably five years old now it's got a 16 megapixel APS-C sensor and a flip screen which I absolutely love a great little camera it's got a fixed equivalent 28 mil lens on it I've got the Fujifilm X100V here that's got a, about a 24 megapixel 25 something like that uh, APS-C sensor in it and it's got the equivalent of a 35mm lens on it and I've got my Pixel 4a now I chose this because I wanted a decent phone with a decent camera and this has got one of the best image capabilities of modern phones even better than the uh, Apple at the moment even though it's only got one camera in the back it's a damn good one but even that is that good enough to use instead of a dedicated point and shoot like the Fuji films. Now we'll look at the price. Google Pixel 4a cost me about $600, that's Australian, which is pretty cheap for a good phone. It's mid range, but it has a really good camera. The Fuji Film X70, okay, they've been made this for a few years now, uh, but you can pick them up very good condition on the second hand market for about 500 bucks. Okay, and if you see one, snap it up, because these are a very much sought after little item. What's hot on the press today is the Fujifilm X100V. Now, these are the latest and greatest. These cost Australian around about 1800 bucks. Okay, so a high-end phone price for that camera. On with the test. So now it's time for a closeness test. How close can you get the phone to, uh, or the camera? to the object. So the Pixel 4a, the Fujifilm X70 and the X100V. The test subject is this beautiful Ricoh half frame 35mm camera that I've got and we'll just see how close a photo we can get of this with those three different devices. So the X70 despite having a wider lens took about the same sort of shot as the X100V and the Pixel 4 there you go, looks like a clear win to the Pixel 4a. The advantage of the phone could actually get closer physically, but also it had a two times zoom thing in it that uh, really helped in that situation as well. Advantage Pixel 4a. So we're out at Lilydale Lake and uh, going to try some night light painting photos with the phone, the X70 and the X100V. So this is the lake at the moment. Got some other people from the Yarra Rangers Photographic Society here as well. We're all having a nice uh, night light painting time. So they'll be having a bit of fun while I'm doing this. This is what it looks like when you're doing a light painting at night. All you see is uh, just this sort of light moving around. But that's what makes a good photo. A70 does a pretty good job. Time lapse, uh, put it on B. Use the shutter for as long as you need. Same with the X100V. Got some pretty good shots there. These were handheld, by the way. But then the Pixel 4a, there's no B, there's no uh, time lapse. So uh, it would only take the shot right at the end and wasn't very good. But the, with the X70 and the X100V, I got some spectacular shots on bulb and uh, they turn out absolutely uh, brilliant. Very, very pleased with them. The phone, however, yeah, just couldn't handle time lapse of any sort at all. So for portraits, the X70 did a good job. The X100 had better dynamic range and better bokeh. And the phone simply couldn't handle in portrait mode the difference between the background and the hair. So big fail there. So what about street photography? I've used the X70 since I've had it. For street photography and it's just the ultimate street camera 
absolutely stealthy. This thing's almost invisible. Uh, it's noiseless. It's absolutely brilliant. I love it. The new kit on the block, however, the X100V, is touted as being a brilliant street camera as well, especially if you like using a viewfinder. What about a phone? I've used phone cameras before for street, and they did a passable job. So I'm going to take the Google Pixel 4a out and see what it's like shooting street against the others. Let's find out. Well, I tried some reflection shots first, and uh, the phone held up as well as either camera. So it was very good there going through glass. And then for high contrast black and whites, of course the cameras excelled at that sort of thing. The phone doesn't do black and white, so I shot it in colour and then converted to black and white afterwards. So a bit of cheating there, but it didn't do too bad a so job. Right, so phones versus cameras. Another thing we got to look at that I find important is ergonomics. Now cameras are purpose built to do one thing, to be used as a camera. And uh, a lot of them, like the Fuji films, are designed so that you can use them in one hand, all the buttons and levers and dials and everything that you need, you can control using one hand. They're comfortable to hold, they're made to hold. Even uh, the bigger one, the X100B, feels really good. It's got pretty good ergonomics. The phone on the other hand, this is the Pixel 4a, could be any phone because they're all much the same in this principle. They're designed to be slim and uh, small and have this massive big full width touchscreen on the front which you don't want your fingers to go anywhere near because it'll do something. And uh, on one side you've got a few controls here so you don't want to touch them because they'll do something while you're trying to take a photo. These are horrible. Downright horrible. I've got a case on mine so that I can grip it a little bit better. <laughs> but most phones with the case off they're designed like a bar of soap. They are shockingly bad ergonomics to use as a camera. The other thing too about the phones is they stick the good camera in the back and on the front there's a yeah, mediocre sort of camera not as good as the, the real deal on the back. Now that's great when you're shooting something away from you like that because you can see what's on the screen to take the photo. But what if you're vlogging? You turn it round, the good camera's facing at you, you have no idea what's going on because the screen's facing away from you. So phone manufacturers, here's a tip. A couple of things you can do. One is put a little selfie screen here so that when you are vlogging, doing a video, you can actually see what's going on. Or, decent camera, put one in the front. So there you go phone manufacturers. Get your act together. Make this useful for vlogging. Have a screen, decent camera, organise yourselves because uh, these are a pain in the neck. Yeah, a couple of extra points I want to make about uh, phones versus point and shoot cameras. When you take a photo with your phone, it isn't just taking a photo. It's doing a whole lot of work in the background to give you an image that uh, looks better than what it can actually do in real life. If you allow your phone camera to do that, then you should allow your point and shoot to do that and you do all sorts of work in Photoshop to make it look better and then you compare the two. Otherwise it's an uneven playing field. For people who say, oh well the phone camera puts out better shots than the point and shoot and ignore all the computer work that's going on in the phone to do that, they're not being realistic. Look, there's even photographers who put out YouTubes about, I shot a whole wedding with a phone camera, you know? I mean, A, it's clickbait. Two, you're an idiot and I wouldn't hire you to do my wedding. And three, yeah, good luck if you want pictures bigger than postcard size to use or stuff on the internet. Those light painting sessions. Nice photos. I got a really good one out of my X70 Fujifilm. So, blew it up, had it printed, framed, it's going on the wall. Good luck doing that with uh, something out of your phone camera. A, the phone wouldn't even do it, wouldn't do the time lapse, wouldn't capture the light painting. And B, once you blow it up, it all falls apart. So they're not there yet. So what are they good for, really? They are good for capturing things. They're in your pocket, great. Pull it out, take a shot. Don't expect anything that will blow your mind. They're good for recording things. They're okay for the internet because what you're looking at, low resolution, smallish size, they're on the screen for people to see. They can look pretty good. 
don't shoot your wedding with it that's a gimmick and you're not actually going to learn photography with one of these because you haven't got the settings you don't have the adjustments you can't play around with it manually you can't experiment you just oh can I choose portrait can I choose night can, yeah. if you want to actually learn photography get a real camera rant off uh, yeah and contrary to popular opinion the phone is not killing the point and shoot the point and shoot wins hands down in numerous scenarios so uh, if you do want to up your game a bit use your phone to make phone calls and get a real camera but yeah seriously no matter what you got <laughs> take it for a walk and have some fun ciao